The other day, I made a YouTube short answering a comment question on one of my videos, which by the way, I will continue to do just in case if you want to participate. But I was talking about how to animate images and using keyframes in Shotcut. Now, I've done videos where I use these keyframes, but I never really made a dedicated video to explain what keyframes are and how to use them in Shotcut. So that's what we're doing today. To explain what keyframes are, think of them as a location in your timeline that marks the beginning or end of a transition, position, or movement. Keyframes are basically like capsules of information that defines where a certain change of position or transition should start or stop. Generally, depending on the type of animation or effect that you're trying to achieve will dictate the amount of keyframe markers that you will need in your timeline to that specific clip. Okay, so that's cool, but how do you use it in Shotcut? To get started, today we're just going to animate a simple image to slide in from the left, stop in the middle, and finish by sliding out of frame to the right. So in the timeline, you can see that I have my main video track, but above that, I have a second video track that contains the image that I am animating. And this is important because the image will essentially be an overlay on top of your main video. It's common sense, but important. Now I'm going to select the clip of my image, go to filters and add a size position rotate filter. This will allow us to change the position of the image amongst other things that you can do. However, before we start making our actual custom animation using these keyframes, there is another option that you can use just in case you don't feel comfortable enough to use and mess around with keyframes. There is a second option that works just as well. We're going to select on the preset tab that will bring a drop down menu, giving us all these options of preset animations that we can use. So in order to recreate the animation that I'm looking for, all we have to do is just select on the slide in from left. And as you can see, it will push our image all the way to the left off screen or off frame. From there, in order to get more control, we're just going to switch over to the keyframes timeline. You can use this little icon or just go down here to the bottom tab. And from there, you can see a little shadow or overlay followed by a little toggle in the beginning of our image clip that just represents the animation itself and the duration or speed of it. So if I go back and hit play real quick, you can see that it will animate and it's pretty slow. But if you go back and pull on the toggle, you can change the speed or duration of the actual sliding in effect. So now that the initial animation has finished, the image is just going to stay right in the center. The next thing that we can do is finish the animation just by adding a sliding out effect. So what you want to do is go to the end of the clip and pull on that toggle. And we're just going to go back to preset and we're going to look for the slide out right preset. And as you can see, it will change the toggles on both sides. But all you have to do is just go back to the beginning and pull the toggle out and it will keep the original animation at set. So as you can see, I have these little overlays on both the beginning and end of the clip that represent the slide in. And right in the middle of the clip, there is no overlay, no toggle whatsoever. And the position can be found to be at zero, zero, which will allow you to have the image stop right in the center of your video until it reaches the toggle with the slide out animation. And like I said, you guys can adjust these toggles to adjust the speed or duration of it. Another thing that I do want to mention is that you can go back to the timeline and just adjust the clip itself. You can make it shorter, longer, or just put it in a different position in the timeline and it'll still keep that preset all the same, but it might change the overlay just a little bit depending on how far you have the toggle stretched out. So adjust accordingly if you want to change the position of the video clip in your main timeline. But I do recommend that you guys have your clip ready before you do any types of animation and just make sure you have everything ready before you start animating, including the length, duration and the position of your video clip or image in the timeline so you don't mess anything up later on. Now that is one option that you guys can use just in case if you don't want to mess with the actual keyframes itself. It's basically the same principle, you just have to adjust it depending on how you want the animation. But if you do want more control over the animation itself, you can use the keyframes. So what I'm going to do next is go back to preset and we're going to change it to default. This will reset the whole thing so we can make our own custom animation with these keyframes. Now that that is ready, the next thing we're going to do is select on the keyframes icon. This will automatically place a keyframe in the beginning of our clip. And from here, we're going to go back to the position settings and we're going to type in negative 1920. This will put our image all the way out of frame to the left like before. 
From here, you just want to click on your playhead and go somewhere towards the middle of the image clip. And we're just going to change that position to 0, 0, and it will automatically put a new keyframe there for us. The next step is to add another keyframe, but you just want to move it a few more frames from the original 0, 0 position. And we're just going to put this position at 1, 0. This will allow us to make another keyframe, but we're just going to go back and edit this to 0, 0. The reason why we're doing this is because Shotgun won't allow us to make a new keyframe with pre-existing position values. So we're just going to trick it by off-putting it by one value, go back and edit it to 0, 0. And this is really important and I'll explain later why we have two keyframes with the same values. And then finally, we're going to add one more keyframe and this one, we're just going to go back to the position and put 1920. This will be our sliding out keyframe out of frame. Now, this next step is really important because this is how we're going to set this up for the animation. So one thing I want to show you is just select on any keyframe. I'm just going to select on the first one, right click. And as you can see, it gives you this drop down menu. Now, it will give you the keyframe type and the option to remove the keyframe just in case you mess up or just cancel the whole thing. But what we want to do with the first keyframe is that we're just going to go back to keyframe type and we're just going to leave it at smooth. This will give the animation just a little bit more smooth this the next keyframe that we're gonna do is our first zero zero position right click frame type and we're just gonna leave it at hold the next keyframe with the zero zero position we're gonna leave it at smooth again and the last one we're gonna leave it at smooth as well now this will allow us to animate this exactly how we want it it's just gonna slide in from the left stop at the middle and then continue sliding out to the right now that hold position keyframe is really important because that's what's going to stop the image in the first place. So if we delete that and we don't have that hold keyframe type and we're just going to leave the other zero zero position and we're going to hit play, we can see that it won't stop at all and it's just going to be one continuous movement. So that's why it's important to have that zero zero position at hold and another zero zero position keyframe at smooth because that will allow it to animate, stop in the middle and continue animating out. So you have to have both of these keyframes in order to make that work. From here really is just all custom work and personal preference. If you guys want to speed up the animation, you can move these keyframes independently and just put them closer together if you want to speed it up or drag them apart if you want it slow it down. So for example, I am just going to mess around with these and just make sure that the sliding animation is faster and the holding animation stays longer until it slides out of frame. So you guys can put these keyframes closer together if you want it faster, pull it apart if you want it to last longer, but that's basically the general info that you will need in order to mess around with these keyframes. So like I said before, you can either use the presets to have this same animation play out, or you can use the keyframes if you want to have more control over your animation experience. One last thing that I do want to reiterate is that you do not want to mess around with your image or clip once you have your keyframe set. Because if you either move it out of position or shorten or lengthen the clip itself, the keyframes are not going to update with it. So it's just going to do a lot of weird things if you do mess around with the clip. So make sure you have your desired length and position of your video clip or image in your main timeline before adding any keyframes to it so that you won't mess it up later. From here, you're done with the animation and you can choose to continue editing your whole video or just export it with your preferred settings as normal. But that's a pretty quick rundown of how you can use keyframes and the different types of settings that you can use along with them. All right, that's basically it. By now, you can probably tell how simple or advanced using keyframes can be. There are so many things that you can do with them that just allows you to have more creative control in your videos. You can either utilize them to do simple animations or some really advanced things. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Let me know if you have any other questions. And if you do, make sure to look at the Shotcut tutorial series on the channel to see if you can find what you're looking for. That's it for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.